All right, where do we start? As you know, lithium uh, coal oxide batteries are very, very popular. Uh, they're in everything essentially that we own and they have been around for at this point about 20 years, right? So one of the newest form factors is this 2170 and Tesla really popularized it because they started putting it in their cars. Now these are starting to become available. Uh, I think we have like a whole palette of brand new ones and we have another palette of other Chinese ones. So the, they're starting to pop up and people are looking for a way to make quick, easy uh, battery packs, right? And so I didn't have one because they were really, really expensive. So I thought like, why am I gonna spend time doing the thing? But now I did. And this is a video that I released, I don't know, last month sometime, maybe four weeks ago or something like that. And you guys have been buying these uh, boards straight from the PCB makers. That's how these projects work, right? I'll design it and then I'll share the files completely open source. You guys buy the stuff. I'll give you links to where you can buy all the connectors and the fuses and the holders. And then you guys put these together. Uh, and that's really the cheapest way that you can do it. Now, obviously there's gonna be some work because you have to do the work yourself, right? But there's not a lot to figure out because I already did all the, that stuff, right? And a lot of you guys are doing it. A lot of you guys are buying them. I can see it in the numbers on the websites where you go and order this stuff and you can see the downloads and people are, are building this. So it's working. The only thing that this part needed here was a BMS because these are essentially 48 volt. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. A lot of people were asking 48 volt PCB and I didn't have one yet. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone here. I did a 48 volt PCB project uh, and did the, the uh, 2170s, right? So uh, these are batteries. Each one of these boards is essentially one battery, uh, 14S one piece so one in parallel and when you stack them like this these uh uh what are these standoffs are brass standoffs will connect one battery to the next so that's how this battery works right so each one is a battery now you're connecting one two three four five battery modules into this bigger module uh and and then you connect all the cells themselves their balance leads together using this uh ribbon if you know about this because this has been around for a while i did this like two three years ago then forgive me for over explaining but for anybody that's new watching this thing that's how this works so this five battery module uh five board module i guess let's call it needs a bms and so now boom we have our bms i designed it and i picked a bms that is easily available on amazon and aliexpress and all the other platforms you buy that and then you put double si sided sticky tape in here and then you put it in there and then you just solder a cable from the from the bottom pad to the top pad there like i did here you can see that's how it's wired and then you just take these wires and then you solder them here. And I've given you little pads to solder here. But of course, I realize some people uh, might not even want to solder, right? And I know, why do I catering, catering to those people, right? Well, because I aim to please here. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using these little connectors here where you would literally just put them in this little hole, solder them there. Well, I think, I don't know. So I can... The plan is to eventually have these and sell them to you guys already made. Like maybe the board and all these connectors already soldered in here and then you just have to buy the thing. But then you would still have to solder, I don't know. Anyways, there's a lot of problems with these. It's either I make it all for you or you guys do it all. But I guess there's sort of a happy medium in there. So maybe that's what I'm gonna do. And so for a lot of these projects that I'm doing, uh, there's other projects where these boards do not require for them to be soldered. There's like, they have holes where you can put screws and screws and nuts, anyone can do. And so that's why I'm using these little connectors because then you literally just cut this cable right here or you don't even have to cut it. But yeah, if you want it to look neat and then you just put them in there, tighten that little screw and then you're done. So what I wanna do is I wanna change this board to that design because, well, this one's not optimized for that. You see that there, those are the trace fuses. And if you were to put this connector right there, now you're, uh, you're blocking half of it. So, and it's only one, I guess over here, it does have those holes too, so you could put the other one over here. I wanna put them all in line right here and use three of these uh, 10S ones. 
or 10 pin ones because then that way you are able to do both of these because this board will allow you to use a single bms but if you need more power then you could also add a secondary one in there and then that will double your power and of course it will require you to use uh more of these so you, uh, your, if your stack is higher somewhere like a 10 or 15 of these then you would use a bms board that has two of these so let's go to the software So here we go. This is gonna be the finished board. As you can see, I added the fuses. I added this uh, better here so you can put the connectors in and make it much easier for you to populate that. Um, also added the address, the URL address to get the BMS unit, right? Because you're gonna have to go looking for that. Uh, and then I added a set of instructions on the back here, uh, just to, to do things to that you have success doing that board now let's go to the table over there and see how you would install this i don't have this one because i haven't ordered it yet i haven't received it but i do have the previous versions that has those small issues that we just fixed here we'll put it on the uh on the battery uh module over there and then just see how easy it is going to be to install okay so once you order your boards and then you populate them you put the uh connectors and this connector and that connector and then the bms units one or two depending on the level of power that you need now of course these are rated at 100 amps but i don't know if you could push 100 amps on these uh I, I mean you could i've tested them and they do push 100 amps but again if you're gonna want to build a battery that's gonna last forever i would suggest you do 50 percent duty cycle so 50 amps 50 amps so if you need 100 amps off your battery then use two and build a 200 amp uh capable bms and then run it at 100 amps and that way they'll last forever that's just the rule of thumb when it comes to uh you know cheap <laughs> uh chinese electronics right so then once you have that you'll have a board that looks just like this and then you'll have your a battery module that it looks just like that so to install it it's gonna be as simple as placing it in here now on this one it's a new design feature that we have here we have the center standoff so that these don't bend and they don't flex a lot so all you do is you install it there now you're gonna have to use little nuts especially on the front ones uh, because that's how the power is transferred from one uh, side to the other side of the boards, right? Or from the boards on the bottom to that board on the top. Do I have a thing? Let's see. Yeah, here we go. So then you tighten those. Don't over tighten, obviously, because these are, you know, just hand tighten, just like that. You need to kill it. And then with the multimeter, if you check here, you're gonna see that it's not gonna be, oh, 43 volts? Huh, look at that. Okay, 44 volts, right? So the battery is at 44 volts, but the output of the BMS is at 43. And the reason for that is because that's just leakage. So that's just tiny amounts of voltage that get past the uh, switches here, right? The MOSFET switches. So if anything, that is an indication that the BMS is off, right? Because it's not the same voltage. But then when you connect that in there, let's see, boom, now it goes up to 44, right? And that is an indication, what is it that, uh, matching voltage is an indication that it's on. 44.3, 44.2, and then on the actual battery terminals, 
44.2 so now the voltage matches now you should be able to load this guy in here with uh i'd say 50 amps right uh obviously you you have to also keep in mind that you can't exceed the power levels of each board each board here can give you five amps right and the reason why it's only five amps is because these um holders have a maximum right they have these little spring loaded clips that get hot after five amps so uh the five amps is the max continuous that you i suggest you put in here and the way we do that is by putting a, a fuse on every board so if you exceed five amps for too long then the fuse will burn instead of your melting your things in here right and so five times five that's 25 so this battery here is capable of 25 amps now the bms is capable more but if you ask for more again you start blowing fuses here if you want 50 amps then you'll have to put 10 at least 10 of these boards if you want 100 amps you know you divide that by five and that's the amount of boards that you will need to add so there you go this uh is a sponsored video by a pcb way you can go i will share the the files the gerber files for you to order these boards and populate them and make this exact uh bms board to go along with the battery module boards at pcbway.com follow the link in the description of this video and you will be able to finish uh, and uh, build this project yourself all right thank you for watching we'll see you guys on the next one bye